So, um, I'm going to try to tell a story uh, uh, which can have many endings and, um, and give you our power, at least our, our ending, where we are in the world. So, um, I'm going to try to weave together um, microbial humans, um, improved uh, human health, and reduced uh, energy cost. Uh, and I'm going to try to to do this um, in the right direction of the slides first. That's the first test. So in the 1970s, with the energy crisis, um, uh, standards for building codes required that we begin, we begin to shut in our buildings and seal the windows. And one of the things that happened that what, is that energy costs went down because we weren't exchanging with the outside environment. Uh, the implication of that was that we, um, we spend now almost in urban centers, uh, about 90% of our time indoors. Um, and we started to uh, feel a range of, um, of illnesses because of exposure to a variety, a variety of things within the interior and exterior environment. So, and, and those things can come, there's a, a variety of toxins in both biological, they're found in our plastics, they're found in our computers, they're found uh, from exhaust from, from traffic, uh, and from uh, the manufacturing of energy that we use to power all the things in our modern environment. So, in response to the Poor uh, air quality. Um, building codes were changed uh, again to require you to bring in more, more fresh air. And what that did was um, make energy, make buildings use more energy. So we're in this problem of uh, we've got all kinds of toxins um, around us, uh, and we're at the same time we're being required um, to bring in air and use energy, which is adding to the toxins. So one of the things that happens uh, uh, from sealing a building up too tight is sick building syndrome, uh, uh, which is uh, the implications uh, uh, are all the way from dryness, itching, stinging um, at, uh, in your eyes, uh, headache, weakness, hypersensitivity. Um, and so these are serious health implications of living in the built environment that we all want to live in together as a community. Centers. So what's the solution? This probably isn't the solution. Um, if we were to if we were to, to breathe air like um, like we drink bottled water in New York City, for example, we would be uh, looking at a, a very different a very different ground. So it turns out that at case one of the things that that we do when we find a complex problem that uh, that seems difficult to solve, is we look for things that might be doing it well already. It turns out that uh, nature, uh, as almost always turns out to be the case, uh, provides, uh, provides a way for uh, with plants. One of the things that uh, plants do really well is a process called phytoremediation. And there are several mechanisms for phytoremediation. The phytoremediation can happen in phytovolatization, which is diffusing these toxins that are in the air um, so that they're less harmful. Uh, Concentrations, phytodegradation, which is the process of the plant uh, metabolizing the energy, metabolizing the toxins. But what we're really interested in is uh, an area called uh, uh, rhizodegradation. And this mechanism happens not in the plant, but outside of the plant in the microbial community. There's a partnership that's brought together between the microbes, like the ones I showed you in the first slide, um, and the plants. And it happens right here in this area. And so. Through the plant, we're able to um, bring together uh, a community. What's interesting about the microbial community is I know the eighth graders are grown up for stuffed animals, but I have a 13 month old who, uh, like microbial uh, communities, requires a diverse um, and competing group to live uh, near plants. What happens are the plants um, produce sugars and alcohol when we water them and we feed them. And the microbes live on the sugar and alcohol. And if you force feed the plant, you supercharge.
charged the microbial community. The microbial community is able to digest, sequester and digest uh, toxins. And so if we can digest toxins uh, at a rate that's up to 200 times more than just a plant that sits in a, in a pod, uh, and we have this environment that's filled with toxins, uh, and we no longer need to take the air from the outside because we can produce the fresh air from within the building, what would that mean to energy cost? And from our initial models, working with our, our collaborators, it's given over to Merrill, which is the place that is co-located. We see that on a 25-story uh, average building, it saves almost a quarter of a million dollars a year in energy cost with today's energy prices. And if you can imagine that on 10,000 buildings, it's not, uh, it's not nickel and dime. So uh, this has been uh, this is being worked on by several different groups, passive groups where the plants are on the wall and they're um, and they're adding to the atmosphere, uh, increasing the air quality, but slowly because the air isn't being pushed through the roots and they're not feeding the plants at the same rate through the through the root zone. And active systems, uh, which were uh, developed, a lot of this technology goes back to NASA. Dr. Bill Wolverton, who did a lot of the early experiments for believing that we were going to terraform Mars, and they thought that we would bring plants with us, and that the plants would provide the environment. Um, and they've developed a single planter. And then uh, the Needlaw system, which is a, a very large system that is uh, embedded right into the building HVAC system, and that becomes the return, the return air for the building. And so we thought we would add our take onto this and begin to um, look at this problem from a modular point of view so that we can take uh, plants uh, in a very controlled, we call a biomechanical hybrid cassette, um, and begin to place them uh, in all types of buildings, new buildings in, in retrofit. And so you can see the cassette, what we call the planar duct, it's part plenum and part duct, so it's the planar duct, um, and a variety uh, of different plants in a variety of different so it can be flat against the wall, it can be freestanding, it can go into new buildings, and it can go into old buildings. And so we built one and began to test it to find out if in fact it did remediate at rates that were significantly higher. And it did, um, and it did uh, 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 show excellent results. And this is uh, a shot from our laboratory Frankenstein um, plant biomechanical hybrid model up at uh, Aerosol's laboratory at Rensselaer Biotechnic Institute. And so turning this into um, a building unit and a modular unit was our next challenge where the air would then pass through these cassettes and back into the HVAC system coming out as clean air and you wouldn't have to take the air from the outside meaning you could lower your energy costs and we could all breathe healthier air. And so uh, the important thing at the, the stage of the type of work that we do which is really to accelerate new technology uh, into the built environment um, was to find a demonstration project. And the first project came to us through SOM, which is the PSAC 2 building, which is the uh, public, uh, answering, the public uh, service uh, answering call center uh, for Greater New York Camp and the emergency, uh, emergency calls. And it's located in the Bronx. And one of the difficulties of locating in an urban center, and particularly in this case in the Bronx, is the amount of particulates in the outdoor air. So they really have a problem, like many urban centers do, with taking in the outside air in uh, as a requirement of so this is what the PSAC 2 building looks like, and it needs to be a secure facility. And so to give you an idea of how few windows there actually are, and why this is important is because plants need, uh, well, besides some nutrients and a little bit of water, they need light to grow. And so it presented a really interesting challenge for us. And we began to do light studies, and it turns out that there are hundreds of plants that do this well to varying degrees, and of different colors, and of different shapes, and of different species. And we can, through uh, digital analysis tools, uh, find out how much light is in what part of the room and begin to create a planting strategy so that that actually begins, so the plants really, based on the amount of light in the room, begin to design the wall itself. And so this is one of the, uh, the early renderings of the Peace Act facility, which is in the lobby. So as the emergency call workers come into the building, when they take the breaks, they'll be surrounded by these plants that are actually breathing for them. And I'm happy to say that the project is under construction. 
And so we thought we'd better get going because that means we have a limited time period to make our system into reality and out of the laboratory. And we began to develop this on a full scale prototype. You can see the pictures here. This now is about eight feet tall and four feet wide um, and has the plants uh, growing quite healthily. This is English ivy, uh, which, does, which does very well. And one of the problems that we came across was while having to light the plant, of course, costs a lot of energy. So we began to look at new lighting technologies, uh, LEDs, that we can integrate right into the plant. And we can see them right into the plant. So now we're lighting the plant from within. And all of the lights from this LED is on this entire 4x8 as 165 watt light bulb to, to light, the, light the entire assembly. So besides improving health, there's a lot of other benefits. Um, and the costs range significantly between 37 and $318 million. Because one of the things we found out about indoor air quality is that um, when it improves, uh, our productivity improves, we're absent less, we're focused more, uh, and we're generally healthier. And so there's a, a enormous benefits from improving our indoor air quality. And of course, the hope of what we're doing uh, with our system is that we eventually become, uh, the plants become the lungs of the building for us, uh, tying together um, the microbes to uh, human health to energy production. Thank you very much. Thank you.